Prey and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm doing great. I got so much accomplished. I would, when I get this all cleaned up and reorganized, I want to show you what I did today. I, uh, I just reorganized some stuff in my office, put some things away that I don't use, and someday I'm going to go through those too. But for now, I have floor space. I've been wanting to get a futon in here. I actually have floor space now to get a futon in here. I'm very excited. I can actually have guests come and sit in here when I get a futon. All right, well, I hope you had an awesome day. It is Saturday, and at my house, it has been raining off and on all day. That's why my hair just looks so lovely like this. Um, Hopefully I can get it washed later tonight. I think it's going to quit raining sooner or later. Well, tonight what I want to talk to you about is that we are citizens of heaven. And so I put citizens of heaven on there. And tonight I have, um, I live in the USA, but heaven is my home. So it's one of my promise t-shirts. And you may have one just like it at home. I have mine on backwards. <laughs> don't tell anybody. I don't really care. I wanted to show this part. I thought it was perfect. I got all my winter clothes back in my closet here in the office. And I found this t-shirt. I had put a lot of my black t-shirts away. Because um, I wear a lot of black t-shirts. So anyway... I think it fits perfectly for what we're going to talk about tonight. So let's jump into some prayer. I'm going to try to shorten this somewhat to like 45 minutes. Somehow, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to cut out. I'm not going to cut out salvation. I'm not going to cut out prayer. But I may do less verses. I may um, cut out reading what I put in on Facebook. I gotta cut something out because I need to cut some time. Um, it's just like even with me, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. If it's over two hours, I'm not gonna watch it unless, because usually I don't have two hours to kill. So um, I've been going over an hour sometimes. I'm gonna try to cut it under an hour. I'm thinking 45 minutes is good. Um, I think 45 minutes might train me for my next um, assignment that I need to do, that I feel led to do. And so that will kind of train me to speak for that length of time. So let's jump into some prayer. I hope that you had an awesome day today and an awesome evening. But we're going to pray now. God, we just thank you. We thank you that we can come before you at any time. It doesn't matter. We don't have to make an appointment to come and see you and to lay things before you, God. You love us. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge, God. And there are so many more things that you are also. And God, we just thank you that uh, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But yet you are loving and kind and compassionate, faithful, um, and uh, you want none to perish, God. All of your promises will be fulfilled and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled also. And God, we just thank you for loving us and calling us as your children. And we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. When we cry out for the lost, God, we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We just pray for the prodigals to come home, God. For them to see where they are in their sin. And for them to return to you and to repent and to have their relationship with you reconciled. 
God, we just pray for Israel and we pray for Palestine, God. We just pray for healing for the ones that have gotten wounded and we pray for the families that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength, God. For all the other disasters, I saw that there are more wildfires in California and different places, God. We pray for those people. We pray that their needs would be met. We pray for people that are in earthquakes and floods and all kinds of different disasters, God, that just seem to come more and more often and more and more intense. Earthquakes also, God, we just pray that you would meet these people's needs, that um, that you would send people to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to show the love and compassion of Jesus. And we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God, we just pray that you would um, and give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that they would feel your presence always. They would feel your arms around them, God. We just thank you, God, that we can lay all these things at your feet according to your will and your way. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, that is our prayer. So I'm going to read what I wrote today, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to continue doing this. Every week it might depend on, um, it might depend on how much I have to read that night. Okay, so this is the song that I shared today. called Citizen of Heaven and it's by Torn Wells and I really like this song. Um, it's very upbeat. It's kind of fast for me, you know, singing wise. It's kind of fast. I wouldn't call it a praise and worship song, but it is a really good song with a very good message. So I wrote, I'm sitting here listening to this song and message by Torn Wells, Citizen of Heaven. I love this upbeat song and I love the lyrics of truth. If we belong to Jesus, we are citizens of heaven. This earth is our temporary home. And and as I sit here with my There Is More t-shirt on, I'm thinking about how much more is to come that we cannot achieve here. The last two years have been years of much loss of loved ones, but we know where they are and we can have peace in knowing that they will never be sick they will never be hurt. They will never be faced with the problems of this world. Never be caught up in stupid drama. Never have to pay taxes to be misspent by our government. All physical and cognitive setbacks removed. And never have to endure the evil in this world. What a wonderful list of nevers. So as citizens of heaven, we will never have to endure any of those things. I like Paul in God's Word. Um, I like Paul in, the, in God's Word. Long for this freedom, this true freedom of living in a totally perfect, incorruptible body. As I get older, I experience more physical pain, more emotional pain, and more frustration with the direction our world is going right now. I look forward to experiencing the beauty of heaven all around, the beauty of the light of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, reuniting with loved ones and friends, feeling total peace, love, and joy with no end, not being sad, sick, or in pain ever, and most importantly, seeing Jesus face to face. Also, I look forward to praise and worship in heaven. It is going to be the best ever. I know that there is so much more also, but even though I am a citizen of heaven and Jesus is preparing a place for me and he will come and get me when he is ready, I'm also daily on assignment to do whatever God calls me to do. He is opening doors right now that he is preparing me to walk through and I'm eagerly ready to see what he has on the other side of the doors. I am a citizen of heaven but I am also a citizen of the United States that I feel sadly is very divided right now. My prayer is for unity and peace, 
real peace through the love and compassion of Jesus. I am also a proud citizen of the great state of Texas. I love my state. I was born here, raised here, and hope to die here and be raptured by Jesus out of here. I pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped or contained also, that God will raise up a huge army of his citizens of heaven to share his truths in the gospel of Jesus. Are you saved today? And have your future and have your future citizenship in heaven. If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven. Sorry, my nose itches. Um, and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen twenty one. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. I'm listening to Phil Wickham's new song, It's Always Been You. It is so good. I wish I could share my music, but YouTube and Facebook won't let me do that. They mute my videos when I do that, so I can't do that. Okay, well, that is all I wanted to share with you about that. Let's look at some scriptures. Talk about our citizenship of heaven. I actually found, is it Philippians 3.20? It's the one that I shared with the picture. Well, apparently not. Oh, that's two. Yes. Okay, so Philippians 3, 20 and 21 say this. And I found some other versions of this, like the American Standard Version and other ones that actually use citizenship instead of conversation. So it says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glory, glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, even to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Okay, and then he starts talking about other people that are there in the group. But the, um, the other versions say, For our citizenship is in heaven. And that is where we really belong. If we belong to Jesus, if Jesus is our Savior, our real citizenship is in heaven. This is a temporary citizenship with temporary things in it that we will not take with us. We talked about that last night with the rapture. We will not have time to pack our favorite things. We will take nothing with us, like absolutely nothing. So when we are in heaven and we are living in heaven, we will need nothing. We won't need anything. We won't need anything from this world. So let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Oh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says this. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves, 
again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that we may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we all, then, then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So we are to live for Christ. We are to also do the things that we do um, in mind of we are doing it for Christ. We are not doing it for ourselves. We are doing it for Christ. We are doing it all for his glory. So let's move to 1 John, which is in the very back. And I think one way that I'm going to cut this down is I'm not going to do as many scriptures. So if you can think of any scriptures that would work with this lesson, then please put it in the comments. But I'm going to try to cut this back to 30 to 45 minutes a night. And give myself some more time too. Uh, first John it says to read all of it so I'm gonna read all of it kind of wish I had a thing to stand my Bible up on maybe I'll look into something like that my hand gets tired of holding this Bible up beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world there are many false prophets out right now and if it doesn't line up with the word of God don't believe it okay hereby know ye the spirit of God every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh flesh is not of God and this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. It is. The spirit of Antichrist is in the world. Uh, we talked about the Antichrist last night. Antichrist is out there. He has not made his way on the stage yet. But he is out there. And he is working towards his plans of domination of the whole world. And so be aware of what you listen to and of the things that you do that are not of God okay they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us he that is not of God heareth not us hereby know ye know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the pro propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of, the, of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out all fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So love God and love people. Love your brother. We are all headed to one place. If you are saved through Jesus, we are all headed to heaven. We are citizens of heaven. I wish I could have found more scripture about that lined up with this, but I ran out of time. I tell you, I have just been working so, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been working so hard today on uh, getting some th things done here in my office. And I look over to the left and I'm just like, I can't believe the blank space over there that had stuff there earlier. Anyway, it's wonderful to see things, to know that things are more organized, that hopefully I know where things are. I hope so anyway. Okay, so I thought I might could find something else about this subject, but I don't know. Oh, maybe there's something in Hebrews. See, I've been listening to other people today, too. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes it's confusing. Oh, I know. Is it Romans 8? I think it's Romans 8. It talks about the priesthood. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I want to read all of that. Okay. I guess I'll read all of it. <laughs> Hi, my friend Josie. How are you? Okay, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And this is Romans 8. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could, could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit and the redemption of our body, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For we a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to his image of his son, to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we, he not with him, also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything, any, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, I love Romans 8. There is so much great, there's so many great things in Romans 8 where it talks about us being heirs and joint heirs with Christ where it talks about that God knew us. He foreknew. He foreknew and he did uh, predestinate. He knows who will accept Jesus. We don't know. But Jesus called us to share, to share the truth and share the gospel and to disciple people too. That is what Jesus called us to do. That is what we are to do while he is preparing a place for us in heaven because we are citizens of heaven and we are going to be joint heirs with Christ. 
and we are going to lose this corruptible mortal body and we are going to put up and put on an incorruptible immortal body that will last forever so that is exciting that is so exciting so I, my prayer for you is that you are saved my prayer for you is that you have accepted Jesus as your Savior so this was um, my meeting wasn't very long today so good morning God good morning child I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus a new beautiful day child to organize and learn to while you organize so I'll listen to things while I organized and that Romans 8 right there I just got through hearing Greg Glory talk about that and that is so amazing that the Holy Spirit took me to that because I wasn't paying attention where it was I knew what he was saying but I wasn't sure where it was anyway a new day to move forward in your calling child I said thank you God for another day of mercies and blessings new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus a new beautiful day to organize and learn while I organize uh, to get ready to move forward into my next calling and he said child do not worry about details that that are mine to worry about I will attend to the details of the future you work on getting things organized and checking what you already have before purchasing something else so I found two projectors I have two projectors I probably will not need a projector but just in case I do it's always good to have a backup plan and one of them is really lightweight I just don't know whether it works or not I might find out later okay um, child focus on what I want you to share tonight also about heaven listen to what I lead you to and listen carefully today you are right, it is not my timing for my reset of the heart of man. So focus on what you can do today to get further organized. Your new assignment will not be done in your house, but outside of it. And I said, um, I said, I see myself doing this for your glory and out of obedience to you also, God. I see it being an open door to me also. I worry about what to do with Seth while I do what you have called me to do. And he said, all will fall into place next week, child. This is going to open doors for public speaking, child, which I have trained you for. A voice for a younger generation that will unashamedly share all that I have taught you, child. Be ready to leave your house, and I will supply all that you need, child. Do not worry, but trust me fully. And I said, thank you, God, for the continual encouragement as I step far out of my comfort zone. I see that. I see that you have been teaching me for this assignment. I trust you to take care of all the details for all things to fall into place perfectly as things have since March. I do see this as an open door. Help me to step through and never look back, God. Give me what I need to do this and be successful for your glory. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. Thank you for meeting me today, God. He said, I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask, child. Complete your list today and reward yourself by doing something that you enjoy the reunion is soon child um, so there is much work to be done also but there is much work to be done also so be ready to continue to work for me and with me until I decide that your journey is at an end 
and your assignments complete. Finish strong, child, just like in a race. Jesus is preparing a place for all of my children, which are really citizens of heaven. Uh, and I said, Maranatha, God. So I'm right at nearly 36 minutes. I want to do a... I want to share the gospel. I'm not sure how I want to do it. I'm listening to, I can only imagine. <sighs> we can only imagine what heaven will be like. Oh my. It is going to be... Uh, we can't imagine. We can read a description, but we can't imagine. We can look at pictures, but... I think it's going to be so much more tremendous than even the pictures. Oh, there's my other little girl. Um. Ah. Oh, your ticket to heaven. <laughs> your ticket to heaven so you can be a citizen of heaven. That's perfect. So we will read this tonight. So your ticket to heaven, may I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it, and that's a good thing, because you could never afford to buy it. It's free, but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, He also wants you to live with Him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket no one wants to go to hell where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever no. and god doesn't want anyone to go there either the bible says that god is not wishing that any should perish second peter 3 9 but there is a problem with getting that free ticket we have all done wrong we have all sinned haven't we god's word says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1 8. Sin pollutes, it makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes, it separates us from a sinless God, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So, who paid for it? Wait, there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born, to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity sins of us all. Isaiah 53.6 Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15:34. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today. So you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life. Your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. That is awesome. You can become a new person born of God to start a brand new life that pleases God and of course all God's children have a ticket to heaven you know why because we are citizens of heaven do you want it it's no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven God has made sure you can receive it the whole issue is did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he God said he did trust God that it is so Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 
Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus has life. 1 John 5:12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. Okay, I'm going to say a prayer but I'm going to leave space to where you can repeat after me if you would like. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Remember what John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? Are you now a citizen of heaven? So if you did say this prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And as you grow as a Christian, you're going to want to read God's Word. And maybe start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis. Genesis through um, to Matthew is wonderful, but a lot of it is hard to understand. So start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Learn about who you just accepted into your heart. And... Um, Ask God to find you a church where you can be baptized and you can fellowship and you can grow spiritually. Um, so you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And you are a citizen of heaven. And you are a citizen here for now. But you, your future destination is heaven. Okay, well, I am going to do this um, blessing, and I'm going to get off of here. And I think 45 minutes is about as short as I can do. So in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Continue to pray for Israel and Palestine. They are, I think, in a ceasefire right now, but who knows. So, um, have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome uh, tomorrow, which is Sunday. Hope you get to go to church and fellowship with your church family. Learn more about God. Worship God. Um just going to say a quick prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for meeting with us tonight, God. Thank you for helping us, God. Thank you for protecting us and providing for us and blessing us, God. We just, just pray that you would help us to have the boldness to go and share your truths in the gospel of Jesus to anyone that we see. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right. Well, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night. And I am at 4507. Good night.